Drafting and Managing UK Amendments. This is a demonstration on what the interface for a new drafting and amending tool could look like. It demos what functionality and key concepts will be included as part of drafting amendments process, namely how to draft amendments in line. It also includes an overview on how amendments can be managed in the system. There is still quite a bit of work to be done to this area to satisfy all amendment related requirements, including how to draft draft traditional formatted amendments and convert them in line. I shall start from the dashboard. A user can go straight to amendments when they first log in from the dashboard view by finding the relevant bill and selecting the amendment button. This will load the structure view of the latest published version of the bill. As seen through the rest of the wireframes, the header contains the short title as well as the stage it is at. Ignore the tabs across the top for now, as they have evolved following feedback from user testing that these old wireframes were not updated to reflect these changes. There are various options to allow the users to skip to the relevant provision in the bill they want to amend. They can insert a page number and or line number. They can search for a particular word or phrase. This includes clause numbers or schedule numbers if it is a particularly large bill or they can find the provision in the structure view. The plus signs next to the provisions allow the users to expand out the structural element. For example, the clause if they want to see the content before selecting to amend it. If the user wants to insert a new provision, they can select this button in the right. In this example, I will click on clause one to amend. This opens up the editor view containing the text of the selected provision. If the user has selected insert new provision, this editor window will be blank. If you know the exact page and line number for the provision you were amending, you could add them here. This is a quick way of jumping the cursor to the relevant position in the text, particularly useful for long provisions. We initially thought that a user could specify what type of amendment they were creating using the buttons at the top of the editor window. However, following user testing, this didn't make sense apart from when they might want to leave out a provision, so these functions will require further thought. To the right of the editor window is the amendment metadata. It begins with the member who is asking for the amendment, sponsors who wish to put their name against the amendment as well, topic. This is a concept that will allow users to group amendments together according to similar themes, instructions or policies, depending on who they are drafting the amendment or amendments for, and how they like to draft. For example, the government might instruct Parley Council to draft amendments based on a particular policy decision. There may be more than one amendment required to fulfil its instruction, in which case the drafter could create their own topic and link all amendments relating to this topic and later use the topic as a way of filtering the amendments for ease of management. Topics are default, so they are always private. This means that only the user and other users in their group can view them. Tags work in much the same way as topics, and following user testing we are grouped to remove this, keeping topics only. Explanatory statements are currently only used in the House of Commons. For government amendments. However, it might be useful to record them against all amendments and as such we've left them in the wireframes. Editor notes is a free text field to record extra bits of information that will not be published and they are defaulted so that they are private. Only the user and users in their group can view them, although similar to topics they can be shared with other users of the system by unchecking the private box. There is a requirement to allow users to draft amendments in advance of an amendment stage. This stage drop-down would default to the current stage, however users can change this to a future stage if they wish and it stops the amendment appearing in the current stage. It is expected that there will be some manual intervention to ensure the amendment fits into the new version of the text when that am amendment stage has been reached. However, this will be explored in more detail during development. There are a number of save options that we wanted the users to be back on during testing. Cancel, which will return the user to the amendment page without saving any amendments. Save as draft, this will save a copy of the amendments in draft status where they are only visible to the user or someone in the user's team. Save and submit, will immediately submit amendments created on this view to the legislation office. This will not, 
This was not popular with users and is unlikely to be an option on the real system. Save and table. A button only available to Parliament clerks who may want to take the table amendment as soon as they have been created, rather than making it a two-step process. And save and create alternative version. This would save any amendments just created and then clear the editor window of any changes so that the user could draft some alternative amendments if they were experimenting with different ways of achieving the same aim. The date and time. This information will only be available to Parliament clerks who may need to copy up an amendment that had been tabled earlier in the day and they want to keep the date time of the physical time it was tabled as opposed to the date time that it was copied into the system. Now I will demonstrate how inline amendments could work in the new system. We envisage it would look a lot like track changes, with the text that is to be left out being clearly marked as such and the text to be inserted clearly marked again. When creating new amendments, it is possible to create more than one at the same time. To do this, the user would make as many alterations to the text as they see fit, and then scroll down to click on the Preview Commons paginated view or Preview Lords paginated view. Paginated view is a traditional formatted amendment. For each separate amendment in the provision, the system will generate an individual amendment in traditional format in this paginated view. In this example, you can see how the clause page and page and line number can be derived, as well as what text should be left out and what text should be inserted. However, it's slightly incorrect in that it doesn't show the first amendment in the text above, it only shows the second. The system will be programmed to recognise the different notations for writing traditional formatted amendments so that the need to update these are very rare. However, no system is expected to be perfect and there will be an opportunity to edit the traditional formatted amendment if a small tweak is necessary. This is the version that appears on the marshalled list so it needs to adhere to Parliament's rules and guidelines. If an amendment has been modified in a traditional format, this will be flagged to Parliament clerk so that they can verify the changes do not have substantial differences to the inline equivalents which would be used to update the bill. The grey boxes below will contain any amendment already recorded against this provision so that you can check if you aren't duplicating an amendment already created by someone else in your team. If you are a drafting lawyer from the OPC, you will only be able to see draft amendments created by you or others in your group tabled amendments created by you or others in your group. This includes those that are waiting to be accepted by the Commons PBO or the Lords Legislation Office, and those that have been accepted but have not yet appeared on an official amendment list. And published amendments created by anyone. These are amendments that have appeared on an official amendment list available elsewhere. If you are a Parliament clerk, you will be able to see draft amendments created by you or others in your team. For example, you will not be able to see draft amendments if they're created by the OPC which haven't been submitted for tabling yet. Tabled amendments. These are both amendments submitted by the OPC that haven't been accepted yet by the Commons PBO or Lords Legislation Office, and also amendments that have been accepted but have not appeared on an official list yet, i.e. they are not considered published. And published amendments. These are all amendments that have been accepted for tabling and are already on an official amendment list. Once a user has completed the amendments for that particular provision, they can either jump to the previous or next provision in order to start recording amendments to these provisions, or use the structure menu on the left hand side to quickly jump to the next provision they want to amend, or click on return to my amendments so they can perform further actions on their amendments. There will be an area in the system where you can access all amendments that you have the privilege to see. For instance, if you are a drafting lawyer for the OPC, you will be able to view amendments that you or someone in your team has drafted at any status. And for amendments drafted by someone outside of your team, you will only be able to view them once they have been published and are available to the public. If you are a Parliament clerk, you will be able to view amendments that you or someone in your team has drafted at any status, and other teams' amendments once they have been submitted for tabling. You will not be able to view another team's draft amendments. This wireframe shows all amendments for the Serious Crime Bill. There are a number of different filter options available in this wireframe. First of all, the user can decide whether to view all amendments that they have the privilege to see or limit to their own, or 
or to see all amendments drafted within their team. They can also choose to view amendments for a particular member with the option to include amendments. They are better reported as supporting as well. You might want to search by amendment type, but following user testing this wasn't popular. You might only be interested in viewing amendments of a particular status. For example, all your draft amendments or all published amendments. You can also filter by topic if this is a function that you or someone in your team has used. You can choose to filter by stage. The default view will be for the current stage, but it will be possible to view amendments from a previous or even future stage. You can also filter by clause or schedule if you want to see all amendments for a particular provision. You might want to filter the list by date to show all amendments that have been published in the last two days, for example. And finally, you might wish to filter by party, which will rely on this information being derived from the member who tabled the amendment. Depending on your filter selection, there will be a list of amendments displayed. Each amendment in the list will display its unique ID, which is assigned by the system, the clause page and line number where applicable, the member lodging it, the topic it has been assigned to if relevant, and the date time. Against each amendment, there are some available actions. These could be edit. This will depend on what type of user you are and what status the amendment is at. Delete. Again, this will depend on what status the amendment is at and what type of user you are. If you have drafted an amendment which hadn't been tabled yet, you would be able to delete it and reopen it later if required. However, if you had tabled an amendment, you would have to contact the Commons PBO or Lords Legislation Office in order to withdraw it. Withdraw. This option is likely to be only available to Parliament clerks who can withdraw tabled and published amendments on behalf of the OPC if required. Table. This option is probably only relevant to the OPC who will need to submit their amendment to the Commons PBO or Lords Legislation Office for, lo for tabling. By using the checkboxes against each amendment, the user can select the bulk action dropdown, which includes edit, an option to select more than one amendment to update at the same time. This will be complicated to build and further work is required to ensure this requirement is fully understood. Withdraw. Again, likely to only be an option for Parliament clerks, although whether a bulk action function is to withdraw it, amendments as necessary has yet to be validated. Delete. As long as the user has authority and the amendments are at the correct status, they can delete more than one amendment at the same time. Table. It is feasible that a drafting lawyer will want to table more than one amendment at one time. The other options we might want to consider include add to topic, if the user would like to add other amendments to a particular topic as a bulk action, rather than opening them up one by one, and add sponsor. Again, another quick way to add a supporter to more than one amendment at the same time, rather than opening them up one by one. The other options not discussed yet are create group which is related to creating grouping lists by Parliament clerks, and so this functionality wouldn't be available to drafting lawyers. Create topic, which is how a user would go about creating amendments for a particular topic. Both these functions have not been fully explored, but acknowledge that we have requirements around these areas which need further consideration. And then there's export amendments. This is the button that will allow users to export amendments in various formats. The most useful one for end users is probably going to be PDF, but is likely to include HTML and XML. The options for exporting amendments would be as a traditionally formatted list, appearing as they would in a marshalled list for example, but made clear that this was not an official amendment list. This could be used by drafting lawyers to collate a bundle of amendments relating to a particular instruction and send it to a relevant person for review. Here is an example of creating a list of amendments in a marshalled list format style. Alternatively, now that amendment data is being captured in line, there is no reason why extracts of the bill or the whole bill cannot be printed, showing the effect that selected amendments would make. This is the end of the demonstration on what functionality and user interface for drafting and managing amendments could look like.